Sunday morning market call. I am your host, Rhett Weller, here today with fellow MBA student Todd Castagna. Uh, Todd, March, Ma March Madness is almost upon us. I know I'm looking to fill out my bracket and do good in the uh, friendly office pool. Absolutely. Uh, and so we thought we'd bring you in because you're our resident sports analytics expert. <laughs> um, recently, MIT Sloan Conference held their annual sports analytics conference with some experts from around, around the world, some quite famous ones. Uh, what can you tell me about sports analytics? Well, the Sloan Conference, first of all, has been around since 2007. Um, so you kind of get a sense that this is a, this is a new up-and-coming field. Uh, there's a lot of debate about when the whole sports analytics thing began. Uh, you could say that Bill James back in the 1980s started the whole thing. But really, the time that it came into the mainstream America was when uh, Michael Lewis, the, the, the great author, uh, wrote the book Moneyball back in 2003. Now, what Moneyball is, it's a book where Michael Lewis follows around the general manager of the Oakland A's, Billy Bean. Uh, the Oakland A's were having a few great seasons, yet their payroll was like $20 million a year, which is like one-fifth the size of, of the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox payroll. So Lewis was thinking, you know, how, how, uh, how are the, uh, the Oakland A's doing it? So he followed Billy Bean around and found out that they were using different ways to evaluate players. They were using sabermetrics, uh, regression analysis, mm -hmm. all sorts of different type of uh, statistical methodologies in order to evaluate the quality of a player. And you know, from that time forward, uh, the whole field has really taken off. Wow, that's, that's really interesting. I know Michael Lewis, uh, he wrote Liar's Poker back in the 80s. He's mm -hmm. a former uh, uh, a junk bond trader. Uh, did a lot of bond trading in the 80s. Uh, I think he was probably attracted to Billy Bean just because he saw a bigger bang for his buck, you know, valuing, getting value out of players and salary, especially in baseball where you have an uncapped system, so to speak. Exactly. I think it's really similar to Wall Street, actually. You know, I, I actually uh, had the opportunity to be a, a trader at a, at a hedge fund before I was here in my MBA program. And what you're always trying to do is just find value, find the underpriced asset and buy it and sell it at a higher price. Um, and that's what Billy Bean was able to do. He was able to say, you know, People are really valuing uh, power hitters right now. So, you know, what what aren't other teams valuing? How can we uh, buy those assets for cheaper because we don't have the money to compete with the big boys? Wow! And uh, so they were able to do that and uh, and put together teams that they almost won the World Series a couple different years. Uh, uh, they fell they fell a little short to the Yankees uh, <laughs> in a tough playoff loss. But um, very interesting book. And you know, Michael Lewis is is a in, like you know, he's one of the great storytellers of our time, just like yeah, Malcolm Gladwell. You know, yeah. who also happens to be a big fan of sports analytics. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, Michael Lewis. You know, we, we talked about him a lot, but he, he, you know, his book was specifically about baseball. Uh, most recently, we've seen a, a you know more adaptations for the sabermetrics type style into basketball or or even football to some ex extent. Mm -hmm. Which sports do you feel like are better suited for these advanced metrics? I think, I think it's the sports where just statistical analysis is really important. I, th I think baseball is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, you know, we use statistics to, to analyze players uh, like crazy. It's a very individual sport where, where players are analyzed not by necessarily how the team does, but, you know, what their batting average is, mm -hmm. how many home runs they have. Uh, what Sabermetrics does is it is evaluates those players even deeper, like, you know, what is their value over um, an, an ambiguous replacement player? Uh, you know, RBIs so, basically just yeah. totally thrown to the side because that depends on the players that are on base, not on the player specifically. Uh, it's moved from baseball and now it's uh, coming into, uh, into basketball. Um, the uh, general manager of the Oklahoma City Thunder, Sam mm. Presti, Sam Presti. He's, uh, he, he uses this stuff a lot. Even Mark Cuban uh, uses uses the analytics. Yeah, a lot. from what I understand, Mark Cuban has his own analytics that he doesn't really share because mm -hmm. he pays for it and he thinks that's my my proprietary knowledge. That's actually his competitive advantage. Right. Um, well, uh, well, Todd, where do you see sabermetrics and this advanced statistical going in the future? Um, an another good question. I actually I actually think that uh, we're going to see it expand quite a bit over the next few years. I think it's kind of it's kind of nearing its prime right now. These Sloan conferences are getting a lot more attention. A lot more general managers who used to be just all about the art of mm -hmm. of you know evaluating players are now starting to see the science behind it. We see five or six GMs in each sport that are really into this uh, this uh, you know sabermetrics mm -hmm. type thing. I think we're going to see more of that. We're going to see most general managers move to that. And then, you know, I think it's just going to become common practice in, in all the major sports, uh, you know, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. They're already starting to do it in evaluating NFL players for the NFL draft. 
Uh, the NBA has been doing it for quite a while, like Sam Presti, Mark Cuban, Daryl Morey of the Houston Rockets. Uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it's here to stay. It's just a good way to combine the science with, with what people had as the art before, cool. which seems to be the way that a lot of, a lot of things are going these days, is putting, cool. putting solid numbers behind the art. Well, well that's good news for all of our uh, MBA graduates looking for jobs if they know advanced statistics. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks, Todd. We, we're, we're glad to have you on today. Uh, we do know, though, even without the metrics, that Jimmer can shoot from the outside. <laughs> Jimmer's VORP is off the charts, right? Yeah. So it. we'd like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Morning Market Call. Uh, we'd like to say thank you for coming. You can visit us more episodes at morningmarketcall.org, and we'll see you next time. Morning Market Call is brought to you by the Marriott School of Management in cooperation with the Brigham Young University Department of Communications. MMC is made possible by generous donations from Larry Tasjan and Gary Williams. This show was produced by Jeff Butler, David Wood, and Doug Mumford with line producing by Beth Grimmett. For more information, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook.